Okay, we are going to look at example problem 16.5 on page 680 and 681 of your ninth, up, uh, ninth edition uh, Governmental and Nonprofit Accounting Theory and Practice book. And what we're going to do is go through some of the transactions in problem 16-5 and talk a little bit about the normal transactions that a nonprofit organization will make. So if you look at number one there, we have a listing of pledges and we have 700,000 for general operations, we have 600,000 for building addition, 200,000 for aid to the elderly, 500,000 as an endowment to be used uh, for assisting handicapped people. Pledges. So pledges are seven hundred fifty thousand for aid to the handicapped, nine hundred fifty thousand for building additions, and one hundred fifty thousand for general operations in future years. Our past history, which is what we're going to be basing our uncollectibles on, is ten percent. One of the things you're going to notice uh, in nonprofit accounting is that a good portion of the stuff anymore is like for-profit accounting. The main differences have to do with restrictions on our assets. So we can have unrestricted assets which means it's spent at the discretion of the charity or the nonprofit. We have um, temporarily restricted which means the donation is for a specific purpose and once that purpose is met the funds are released. Okay, and then finally we have permanent restricted and that's generally going to be like your endowments. So we're the where the principal is protected and the interest is used for the purpose designated by the endowment. So let's look at that first entry here. Uh, we received cash of $2 million. So I'm going to type in my $2 million. I can count my right zeros. There we go. Okay, we also received pledges of $1,850,000. So again, this would be just like a receivable for our um, for a for-profit um, enterprise. So we also have you know, label my columns here. We have debit, of course, and credit. Again, everything the same as a for-profit company. Uh, as in receivables, we have allowances for uncollectible accounts. So our 10% pledge uh, uncollectability estimate, we're going to set up that allowance at this point in time. Okay, so we are going to do a entry to set up our allowance. And our allowance is going to be a credit for $185,000. Okay. We then have our unrestricted support, which is going to be our... 700,000 for general operations. And I can tell you as somebody who has spent most of their life doing that, that is the, and a nonprofit's organization's best friend is unrestricted contributions. Because you can use those for salaries, you can use those for whatever purpose you need. So those are oftentimes, sometimes be the hardest to get, but it's also the most important for you to get. Our next category we're going to use is the permanently restricted. Well, our permanently restricted is going to consist of that endowment. So we have a $500,000 endowment, which can only be used for assisting handicap. And generally, so when most people set up an endowment, they're using the interest and the earnings on that instead of spending the, the principal. Finally, we have our temporarily uh, restrictions, which we will see we are going to record the rest of them so two four six five zero 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 okay so and we can check we've got three million eight hundred fifty thousand in that tree so our temporary restricted contributions and i can break that out if you want we can break it out into you know the different things for the building addition, oh, 600,000 for the building addition, 200,000 aid for the elderly. We can break those out and you probably would in real life. You'll break it down by maybe by category of how it fits best for you. But for this purpose we're just going to record the temporary restrictions on the contributions. 
Okay, next we are going to uh, take care of our building. We've done a building addition at a cost of a million five hundred thousand. The six hundred thousand received in our first transaction was paid to the contractor, and the balance owed is on a five-year twelve percent note. So again, this works just like a for-profit company. Basically, we are going to record our building at a million five hundred thousand. Okay, so that's easy enough, right? And then we are going to record the payment of the cash. Our cash, oops, our cash we paid was six hundred thousand dollars. So we're going to credit cash, just like we would any other expense or expenditure. The balance then of nine hundred thousand dollars is going to notes payable. So that's going to be classified as a balance sheet liability. Okay, the other thing we do that's a little different in nonprofit accounting is we do transfers between funds. And what's happening here or is we have our, since we spent that 600000 that was temporarily restricted, that restriction has been lifted. So we're going to have a reclassification out of 600,000 and a reclassification in of 600,000. One too many zeros there, sorry about that. And what that does is it transfers the funds from our temporarily restricted fund to our unrestricted. So we've released that restriction. Once the purpose of that fund has been met, we release it and those funds are no longer restricted. Okay. Next, we have some expenditures. We have unrestricted uh, resources that we've used from our unrestricted funds. We have fundraising of 100,000, general and admin of 80,000, aid to children, program A of 320,000. We have, from restricted sources, we have aid to the elderly, 200,000. We have aid to handicap, 400,000. We have we paid a tenth of the note principal, ninety thousand dollars. We have six months interest of fifty-four thousand and endowment investments of four hundred fifty thousand. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're just going to record those entries. And again, this goes pretty much like um, our for-profit accounting. We're just going to make some. Uh, we just know where the money's coming from or what category it's coming out of. So our expenses for fundraising, we're going to record for $100,000, a debit. Our general and admin, again, coming out of unrestricted, is going to be $80,000. Then we have our aid to children, program A, of $320,000. Then... Okay, then we have our expenses for program B of 200000 We have our expenses for program C of 400000 Our, just need one more zero there, sorry about that. And then we record our interest expense, just like always, 54000 It's going to be interest expense. We have our principal payment of 90000 and our investment. So we're taking some of our cash that we had received from our endowment, and we're investing that into, could be CDs, it could be whatever type of investment that you would choose. Our credit then for cash is a million six hundred ninety-four thousand. And again, that reclasses our, I mean, that pays out the cash that we spent. Our reclassification um, in this particular case is going to be 600000 And our 600000 reclass is coming from the transfer of our temporarily restricted funds of aid to the elderly and aid to the handicap. Since we spent on those particular programs, we can release those restrictions so we're transferring those from temporarily restricted to unrestricted so we're transferring that out so we can pay them off and the, those restrictions are lifted money spent 
So those again were for program B and for program C. Uh, next we did a equipment costing uh, equipment purchase costing um, three hundred thousand dollars. Again, this is just like a for-profit company. Three hundred thousand dollar increase equipment, three hundred thousand dollar decrease to cash. No difference there, no other changes that we have to make since the funds came out of there. If we were transferring funds out of restricted, then we would have to um, we would have to make our uh, reclassifications in and out. Uh, finally, we had a, in number five here, or for this portion of it, we are going to make a sale of equipment for forty thousand dollars. The original cost of the, the equipment, was a hundred thousand so we're gonna credit our equipment for a hundred thousand we have our accumulated depreciation of sixty five thousand and then our gain will be the difference which in this case is going to be five thousand so we're going to record a five thousand dollar gain unrestricted gain on our equipment sale and that is it for this particular portion continue on to part B